one has to really clearly understand that epilepsy is not in most of the times associated with mental retardation or rather seizures do not bring mental retardation and brain damage. It's very rare the circumstances that this may occur and we are actively researching under what circumstances this can happen. An epileptic seizure is an abnormal behavior that results from uh, uh, neurons excessively discharging. Now this is jargon but really the best way to describe it is that as if you have static in the phone line that interrupts the conversation between two people and think of neurons being two people. We used to treat anyone who had even one seizure with seizure medications, thinking this was probably epilepsy, and now we generally reserve treatment for those who have at least two. There are different kinds of seizures. Broadly speaking, we separate seizures into two classes. One is so-called partial or focal, and that means they start in one part of the brain. They may stay in that one part, or they may then spread to other parts. And the other type are generalized seizures that seem to start all over the brain at once. Uh, things like what used to be called petit mal or absence seizures, where people just stare. Uh, myoclonic seizures, where people have just a brief lightning-like jerk. And uh, other seizures of that type. Convulsions, while the dramatic are the ones that get people attention, uh, are by far the least common seizure type we have. Infantile spasm is one of the most debilitating conditions that can occur in young babies. And this is the abrupt onset of a seizure that's characterized by abrupt flexion or extension of the body. And it can occur many, many times during the day. And if they continue to recur, then this is one of the conditions that the brain can be severely altered damage with subsequent consequences that include mental retardation and autism. We are now doing studies looking at predictors of outcome, uh, looking at the long-term consequences uh, of infantile spasms, but it is very clear that this is one of those conditions where we are very aggressive using uh, treatments with significant toxicities, but for short term. Uh, in order to try and actually not just control seizures, but reverse uh, a process. Febrile seizures are the most common seizure type in children, and frankly in the world. They occur in 2-5% to 5 of all children, and for the most part are short and benign. A small subgroup, about 5%, are very prolonged, more than 30 minutes, or status epilepticus, and they don't seem to stop on their own. Uh, something somehow is not stopping. And in those children, there is a higher rate of epilepsy. And our studies are trying to define the link between those seizures and the subsequent temporal lobe epilepsy. And we're finding that a proportion of those children have acute injury uh, in an area of the brain called the hippocampus, uh, which seems to be unique to children with the prolonged febrile seizures. For most of the seizures, the effects may be minimal, especially if they're short and they don't recur at the very frequent times, at least in terms of very gross abnormalities. It is now increasingly clear that many patients, even with mild seizure disorders, uh, have learning disabilities and other conditions, but it is exceedingly unclear that this is due to the seizures or more likely reflects the same brain abnormality underlying it that's causing the seizures. Because we now know that if you study children and adults right at the time they develop epilepsy, they already have these conditions. As part of what we do with the International League Against Epilepsy and the lay organizations such as the Epilepsy Foundation of America is to bring out the message that everybody can participate in sports, but also the people who run this particular activity should be very comfortable with the idea that a person has epilepsy and should not up discriminate against those kids. About a month ago, we had a tournament that took place before the semifinals of the European Federation of Footballers, where young people with epilepsy played a game in Gothenburg and in Hellisburg. Uh, and they were absolutely magnificent in their skills. 
Interestingly, one of these kids had a seizure in the morning while we were practicing. That did not stop him two hours later to be on the field and being a magnificent goalie. During the last International Epilepsy Congress that took place in Budapest uh, about three weeks ago, Simon Chauvin put together a booklet of the advances that happened over the last hundred years in epilepsy, and this is really tremendous work. Now we have a much better understanding under what circumstances seizures may occur. We can diagnose them much better either with the use of the EEG or the um, imaging techniques that they may be available, but much more important since we have a much better understanding of the semiology of the symptoms that are associated with the seizures, by taking a very good history, we can reach a diagnosis quite easily. And as a result, we can institute treatments. Our knowledge about epilepsy has increased by leaps and bounds, although we have not reached the level that we still want, which is to cure epilepsy or to prevent anybody from having epilepsy.